Hello everyone and welcome to Sedalia Downtown Streetscape Reimagined. Um, my name is Chris Harrison. I'd like to start off by saying thank you all for allowing me to work on this project with you. It's been a lot of fun and I hope that it spurs um, conversation into moving Sedalia into creating a physical manifestation of their values and the heritage of the town. Um, so I'm going to start off by telling you a little bit about me and then we'll kind of move into the visualization and then talk about some infill and the next steps. So my name is Chris Harrison and I'm originally from Alexandria, Virginia. Um, I graduated from A&T in 2007 and from NC State uh, University in Raleigh in 2012, both times with degrees in landscape architecture. Um, I've worked as a landscape designer, graphic designer, and I've come full circle now back at A&T and I've been teaching there for about six years in a program of landscape architecture. And I also have a small company called Design Biz Tool that does architectural visualization and planning. So I was asked to visualize uh, the streetscape, um, really the recommendations that were made by the uh, bicycle and pedestrian plan that was recently completed for the Burlington Road corridor, specifically between Rockhurst Drive and Rock uh, Creek Dairy Road. And you see here the overall town map of Sedea, the extents, um, just some images along the Highway 70 corridor, and then a blow up of the focus area. So there were three alternatives that were prescribed by the bicycle and pedestrian plan. I decided to focus on one. Um, the five foot sidewalk with five foot planters on both sides of Highway 70, with the addition of five foot bike lanes on both sides of Highway 70, and 10 additional feet added to the sidewalk on the south side of Highway 70, running along the school and the Charlotte Hawkins Memorial site. And you'll see that visualized here shortly. Um, you'll see here, and if you have your, uh, your booklets as you're going along with this, as you flip your booklets, you'll actually be able to see the side-by-side -side comparison. Um, but what we're looking at now is the existing conditions, kind of uh, streetscape, a cross-section, if you will, of what's going on right now. Now, the right-of-way meanders between 70 to 80 feet. But for the most part, we have three lanes, one going east, one going west, and then a center turn lane. Um, then you have buffers on both sides that just kind of swells out. There's no real um, stormwater infiltration system that's there other than natural swells. You'll see in the proposed design, the streetscape is pretty much the same as far as the lanes, but the addition of sidewalks, the planted buffers, and the bicycle pedestrian lanes and the sidewalks makes a tremendous difference in how the town feels. Um, it allows for the planting of canopy trees that really begins to create a sense of overture and slows traffic down. Um, and nice big sidewalks and in this illustration you also see some info. Now to go back to the um, oops. to go back to the existing uh, streetscape here some of the problems with, with this is that it's not walkable. I mean, number one, it's very uncomfortable to walk out here. And though it's posted, I think, no more than 45 miles per hour, um, people fly through this area. Every time I've been here and spending time in the site and taking pictures and sketching and thinking about what it could be, people are, are flying down this highway. So, and, they really, and because of that, there's no sense that you're in a town. And to be honest, before I was working on this project, I wasn't aware that this town was here. I would just drive through this corridor going to Raleigh. Um, so that's, it's important to create a sense of identity because it's, it's a really important heritage that's, that should be celebrated, especially in this part of North Carolina. Um, with such close proximity to A&T and other HBCUs and universities, there's a strong legacy of that here and it should be celebrated and people should know about it. Um, so the streetscape really helps slow, slow traffic down and it creates walkable streets to allow citizens not to have to get into a car, um, but instead to be able to walk on these big sidewalks that are protected by um, these planted buffers with nice canopy trees that protect them from the sun in the summertime to make things nice and cool. Um, you even see the inclusion of benches here. And it helps energize both sides of of the road and create a place that's more walkable. So now what you're going to see is a video that shows a side-by-side -side comparison of the corridor, the focus corridor. And it's a streamlined, very stripped down conceptual model um, that 
makes it easier to understand the massing and how the proximity of, of planting material um, and changing or, or squeezing the road can really make the walking experience or traveling experience along this corridor feel. And as you can see on the left hand side obviously is the proposed and the right being the existing and just squeezing the road and the addition of the sidewalks and the bicycle lanes and really the planter strip makes a huge difference in how the town feels and how the traveling experience coming through the town feels. This overture and this nice canopy, this LA, it creates this beauty and nostalgia that I think towns are looking for. Um, you see street lights too that add uh, a sense of, of, of place. And these street lights can also be modeled after the existing street lights that are around the, the Charlotte Hawkins Brown Memorial site. Okay, so that's kind of a comparison of the two corridors and what would happen by putting this in and if you traverse the whole area. So now we'll go back to the presentation. Okay, let's click back. So now what you'll see, um, and again, if you have the booklet in front of you, these will be side-by-side -side images, but some before and after images. Now, most of these before and after images focus on the um, opposite side of the road from looking north from the Charlotte Hawkins Memorial Site. And that's done because we think putting an infill in this area would help activate the memorial site and then vice versa. So it would just be this awesome synergy that, would, that could occur. Um, so that's a, just a huge difference looking across kind of towards this green field. Um, now you see uh, uh, you know, the, the medians, the planted buffers, you see the bike strip, you see the beautiful street lights and um, civic art. You see the nice architecture, the brick that's tying into the Charlotte Hawkins Brown Memorial site. Um, just creating rooms and creating places and of, of interest that people want to walk and feel safe walking. Um, this is looking down Highway 70, looking um, uh, towards the memorial site. Um, and what you see here, the after, this work, there you go. It's going to be, yeah, so a huge difference again. Uh, lanes being the same, but with the addition of the planted buffer and the infill in this instance and the street lights completely changing the way the corridor feels looking west. Now this is um, another shot on the Highway 70 corridor looking east. Again, around that Charlotte Hawkins Brown Memorial site. And again, just another huge difference about putting street trees in that will mature or in this instance, red oaks. Um, planted median, just big shrubs and hardy uh, native species, so requiring a little irrigation and low maintenance. Um, nice striped and demarked bike lanes, so it makes it very clear where bikes are coming and tells people that we care about bicycles and bike lanes. And beautiful infill, and you see kind of peaking here in the corner um, a farmer's market, what we'll see in more detail in the next slide. So some additional images. So here again is public art. We think it's an important um, aspect of towns is to allow for public art um, that changes. So it creates a sense of mystery and um, gives somebody a reason to say, hey, let's go downtown today and see what they have out there. Um, and creates a sense. And it can also can be a conveyance of the culture of the place. And these things could be sold. And just an awesome way of bringing people to the town and activating the town and also creating community engagement. And what you see too, looking south um, towards the Charlotte Hawkins Brown Memorial site, that green field there now, we put in some picnic pavilions um, to help activate the site so it's not just dead. Because the times that I've been there, um, it's not really been very highly used. Most of the time, the people that see out there are the ones on the grounds, maintaining the grounds, working there. So I think that it's an awesome history that's kind of lost and that we need to activate it and really um, understand that 
it is part of the fabric, a foundation of what this town is. It's, you're inextricably linked. Um, and that connection needs to be made in a physical way as well. And both sides need to be activated in some way. And again, by putting these picnic pavilions in with restrooms, you have opportunities for picnics now and having Founders Day out here and really engaging where I think it probably should be um, in, in the heart of the town of what it is. You also have opportunities for infill in this instance of playing around running uh, along that corridor across from Charlotte Hawk and Brown's Memorial site. Um, so a lot of opportunities to put things in. So imagine having coffee out here from your favorite um, cafe and having a donut or something and looking out over here and watching your grandkids or watching your children in the playground. And it's all for free and all part of the fabric of your community. And then you can just walk home when you're done. And here, one of my favorite images, really expressing kind of the essence of what this town could be, just diverse, bringing people in, um, being progressive with these beautiful green walls. And uh, another thing to bring people in to say, wow, have you been to today? Let's go over and check that out. Branding, really having your colors that I tried to and, and just infuse in all the designs through the umbrellas and even the colors used in the bicycle lanes, really trying to create a sense of branding, that things that blend and let you know that you're in a place that was thoughtfully designed. And again here, also demonstrating the farmer's market area and the infill of that, having these um, farmer's markets that can pop up with these tents and having spaces large enough to accommodate them, to bring people in again, to activate the space. So it's not enough just to have a physical character, which is awesome and important, but it's also important to program the space so that people want to come and give them different uses and create a sense of mystery so you never know what's coming next, but you know you want to be there. So next steps. The next steps would really be moving on to the planning process. This was just really visualization and trying to spur interest and excitement in what the town could be. Um, really what needs to happen is, probably with the, the help of, of, of a, a trained professional, a planner, um, is to sit down and begin to have community design charrettes um, and do really good assessment to figure out what parcels are available, who wants to sell, about land banking, um, about water, about sewer, all these different things, um, about how much commercial infill can the town hold or withhold, what does it want to look like, um, are the archetypes that you see here, is it really what you want or should it be something different? All these things can be worked out in a comprehensive way um, that garners civic engagement and is really help, gonna help um, promote that in, in this process, but that really needs to happen in order for next steps to move on to really make these things come to fruition. So the streetscape is a great catalyst, um, I think, for something much, much bigger that needs to happen, which is creating a, a master plan for the community and then creating legislation, ordinances that support it so when developers come in, they develop the town in the way that um, is in keeping with the, the morals and the ethics and the culture of the people that live there. Um, and so that your children and grandchildren and yourselves can live in a place that you're proud of that really um, represents what you all care about and love. And I have this quote that's here in, in the text that says, you have the power to design today for your, ch your children, grandchildren, and yourselves. You can create a place that improves the lives of everyone in the community through its physical design and creating policies that reinforce it. And that is really the truth. You really have the power to change the town into something that's really beautiful and unique and um, that you're proud of and that celebrates its very, very rich history and important history in this area. Thank you.